substitute to normal vegetables? So that's one question that we received from Twitter. And sir, can we add yeah. your question, please? Yes. Good afternoon, I'm Melo Acuna from China Ravens International. My question is, have you ever made a study as far as possible average yields of various countries in Asia in relation to their uh, average annual birth rates? Thank you. So, question on vegetables and question on average yields and birth rates. Projections. <laughs> On the vegetables, uh, I like vegetables, like many other people, and uh, I'm obviously rich enough to afford them. So the question, uh, so the ultimate solution, obviously, also for people who are currently vitamin A deficient, is that someday they should also be able to uh, consume more diverse food intake including vegetables and other sources of vitamin A, also from, from livestock products. Also. The question is, how do we get there? There are many who say, well, why don't you just teach people to how to have home gardens? Well, that's a nice idea if you have a garden, and if you have land, and time to grow something. If you live as a squatter in Manila, you don't have a home garden. So then there are others who say, well, why don't you fortify food with uh, micronutrients and vitamin A, or why don't you have uh, uh, pills, pill supplementation programs, which also have been running for a long time here in the Philippines. The partners that we work with from the health community, including NGOs like Helen Keller International, tell us that these programs are simply not sufficient because they do not reach into the deep corners, all the way where you need to have, uh, where you have those most deficient people. So they're not sustainable programs often because uh, they cost money uh, and you can only run them uh, with a certain logistics setup. So they have done this for many, many years and progress has been relatively limited. That's why an intervention that focuses on a stable food crop, and golden rice is not the only one in Africa, there's been a lot of emphasis on orange uh, sweet potato or orange maize uh, as a stable food crop. An intervention that focuses on a food crop that is your basic carbohydrate supply on a daily basis brings up your supply level right away. And you will still need on top of that other sources of vitamin A vegetables or even from processed food. But it brings up your supply and our goal is 50% of the daily need through eating golden rice, not more, not 100%, 50% in those people who need it. And then you have these other sources to hopefully have a healthier diet. And if of course you economically uh, advance and have higher income, you can buy more of these other sources, then you will need less of the golden rice someday. So we look at it as a, in some ways, a temporary solution that may be needed to overcome a lingering problem that has not been solved for decades, a lingering problem once and for all within the next 15 years. Uh, and that's, I think, a responsibility that we have also for the next generation in some ways. So, but it's, I think, in the end, uh, all about also giving people a choice. And if for some reason some people think they do not want to eat GM rice, then that's just your choice. Uh, it's like uh, me saying, well, you know, I'm eating meat, and they saying, no, I don't want to eat meat. Uh, or some people suggesting that the only food to eat is organically grown food, where the others say, no, I don't care. We should give people choices, we should not dictate to them what is good for them and what is bad. On you, Dr. Hay, any no. additional comments? Um, yes, I think the golden rice is one option. Uh, if you are economically well off, I think obviously that you don't need to rely on a single uh, source of diet to give you that. So I agree with uh, Kim, what he said. 
I, there was a question about the relationship between average rice fields and annual growth rates. My simple answer is I do not know of any such study. It would be an interesting study to conduct, but I don't know. But about average yields considering climate change and everything? Well, we, we know the, the yield trends of rice in every country. Okay. And there are big differences, obviously. Some countries uh, in, in the last 20 years have had big yield increases, Vietnam, for example. Uh, others uh, have stagnated. Thailand is in that category, for example. Others, what about the Philippines? Philippines is like modest increases, you know, and sometimes affected by extreme weather or climate, we have a lot of uh, disasters here in the country. You know. So, but there are also some countries which have uh, had much faster increases. You know. The, the reasons for this are very complicated. There are many reasons. There, there are endowment with land and water, there's climate, there are political decisions, there's investment. So it's not easy to, to, to say this country has done better than this country because of this, this and this. What about government spending in agriculture? Government spending uh, is still, I think, uh, the primary force. You know, and uh, uh, if there are fluctuations in this, uh, if there is not sufficient attention to agriculture, uh, you will not have a sustained growth. Okay. So where does the Philippines stand? I honestly don't know. I haven't done a comparative <laughs> 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 for government spending in the Philippines. Okay. I would be actually interested in looking this up myself. Something Thank you. for the discussion. Okay, uh, we have Custer and then Saul and then Melody. Unfortunately, I think that's our last round of questions. Uh, Custer, Yokaris, Pankaja, Aguilar. Um, considering the present status of GM rice, when do we ex you have any time on the target when consumers can buy it from groceries as golden rice or even golden brown rice? That's my first question. Second question, uh, it's with, with regards to the environment, uh, do we have and does it have an impact on, on contaminating the genetic resources of our indigenous rice? If we have a wide wide scale plantation of uh, golden rice or some genetically modified rice. So. Um, sir, um, please um, can you enlighten me on what really happens when we um, during the field tests of um, the of the golden uh, golden rice, and uh, what are we expected? What are we expecting from the conduct of these field tests? And uh, third question is that in the light of the August attack on the field test of golden rice, um, what steps? Have you taken, and you will be taking um, before the end of the year. Are there any concrete um, steps or actions that you're going to take? Um, I think I read or read somewhere that uh, golden rice has already been tested uh, with targeted with a targeted vitamin A deficient children. I'm not sure, but if there is, could you update us? On, uh, okay, thank you for the questions. Regarding the timeline, we have a step-by-step, -step, more detailed approach in evaluating golden rice. So we start from the contained experiments, then we go on a limited uh, confined field testing, one site, one location, and then finally multi-location field testing, several seasons and several locations. We have completed the multi-location field testing. Well, we need to review our data we have sufficient and complete data uh, so we can submit them to the Bureau of Plant Industry. Uh, we need to evaluate the effect of the destruction of our built sites in PD. Uh, but if we have our way, then we would like to proceed with submitting the dossier hopefully in the next uh, few months. So that's the timeline. In terms of when it's going to be available for farmers to plant and for the consumers to eat, we don't know because the regulators will determine you know, how fast it determine uh, the completeness and the uh, validity of those data. So they will have their own timeline in terms of evaluation. Somebody mentioned about uh, one of the questions about golden rice getting incorporated to other rice production systems. Uh, that's not a big concern, especially once we get by safety approval, because what's the concern if it's safe anyway? But for those for the rice that we produce in the Philippines and export to other countries and we still have approved 
approval yet for GM, GM rice, then we will have to be very careful that ordinary rice will not be planted in those areas where heirloom rice is being planted. And uh, in terms of what do we expect from the field trial, well, field testings are very important to the evaluation of products like golden rice because we want to see how they actually grow in the field. And I'd like to tell you that there's no difference between golden rice and ordinary rice unless you the hard of mature grain and you see that golden rice is yellow and ordinary rice is white. Uh, and field trials are also, are also very important because that's how we produce the grains that will be evaluated in the laboratories in terms of composition, um, beta carotene level, and so on. So in terms of the question on possible, well, what's our plan regarding the destruction of one of our field trial sites, we are contemplating filing legal action, but that's not definite yet. We are still reviewing it, but it's a possibility. Uh, and on um, you know, question, whether golden rice has been tested on children, no, it's not. No such a study was done or is being done in the Philippines. Why? Uh, it, it's in the timeline, but not at this time. Okay. We, 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 we might be able to do that once we get the bi safety. Yep. Once that's approved. Mike, or. But it's plan of the evaluation. Uh, no. That's by efficacy. We will. We will do a nutrition study once we get the bi safety approval. But that will be down the line. Uh, What's the nutrition study that includes like a clinical well, study? Well, nutrition study, bioefficacy, does it work? How much improvement in the vitamin A status will the consumption of golden rice on a regular basis for 30 days? Something like that. And that study will be conducted by the Helen Keller International because HKI has the, uh, has the expertise to do such kind of study. So you'll do this kind of study in the Philippines with children and adults? We, we, will, we will see, but what we have in mind will be the adults first. And how about children? The children may be later because it's also very important to, to have that kind of information. So they will have to be included in any nutrition study? Yes, somewhere down the line, but initially the adults and also the, the women. It's because the women and the children are the ones who are vulnerable to terms of vitamin A deficiency. Eventually, 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 yes. the, the, the first thing to establish is that people who eat golden rice can actually effectively convert the beta carotene that is embedded in a starch matrix in rice, effectively convert it into vitamin A in a, in a human body. And that's what we call bioefficacy. So that is our main target. So because if we can show that we have, that has already been demonstrated in some other studies, that it is as efficient or even more efficient than eating beta-carotene from another source like carrots or, or green leafy vegetables. Then you have proof that this is something that will have the intended nutritional impact on these people. So the current knowledge that we have suggests that the beta-carotene from a starch source like golden rice is actually more efficient than the beta carotene contained in leafy green vegetables. So it's actually very promising, uh, but uh, as Tony has pointed out, uh, once we have biosafety approval in the Philippines, there is need to do a few more, to do a few more subsequent nutrition studies. Uh, it's part of the process. We want to ourselves be 100% sure that it has the intended nutritional benefit, and that it, that it also has no harmful effects on anybody eating it. We don't expect that. Uh, there's no uh, evidence for any of that. Uh, uh, but of course, it is our responsibility to study that very carefully. And uh, as Tony said, uh, he wants to eat it himself and his family, so he, he wouldn't uh, push anything out for release that's not safe. How long did it take you so far to develop golden rice? Right? Because you were talking of you know the long <laughs> process. Yeah, since when have uh, you been doing this? Okay, so the, the whole history is actually quite long. Uh, I think active research on golden rice is now probably, if you include the very early stages, I would say it's about 20 years. 
20 years now, as of now. Yeah, but here in the Philippines, of course, uh, uh, it took off. Uh, well, well, there was a. The first was the discovery of <coughs> the actual biochemical pathway, the genes. So that was basic science done by a scientist in Switzerland and a scientist in Germany. So the active work here in the Philippines, where we now focus on actually making it into a variety for release, and that's probably been going on for a little more than 10 years, I would say. We started in 2006, yeah. Yeah, so with a little bit of precursor, so it's actually less than 10, 10 years of the breeding <coughs> But these things take time, and uh, the problem is that, uh, well, not the problem, but we want, we have no interest in rushing something out. You know, we want to do it carefully, step by step, also because it's, it's, it's a new thing also for the Philippines as a country. So, sir, Thank you. excuse me, um, are you eyeing by safety approval by the end of 20, uh, 2013? Uh, when we submit the dossier, there is a response time that is a bit thing. Was it 90 days or 60? 90 days. Yeah. So we cannot control the response time. So we will try to submit it within the next few months. But then, uh, whether how fast the response is uh, is out of our control. That's a decision by the biosafety committee. In those three Thank countries, you. Is it, does it take longest here in the Philippines? We are furthest ahead at present in the Philippines. Well, also because we started earlier here. Uh, but the process uh, in the other countries uh, could catch up at some point. Thank you very much. So at this point, uh, we would like to say a uh, few last things and then invite you back down to plenary. Dr. Hero? Yeah? Yeah, which is going on right now. Um, so we started the session with Sophie Clayton talking about the science behind understanding rice genes and that it has the huge potential to help farmers and consumers, um, but that it's not the first GM crop or food. And then we heard from Dr. Young the richness of rice genetic diversity, 117,000 or so, and that we're only able to exploit around 5% of that and from uh, Tom Navasero of the technologies that we can use in speeding up the process in genome sequencing. Uh, then uh, from uh, Dr. Doberman, uh, when does it make sense to use GM uh, versus conventional breeding? The GM route uh, is a long process as we've been discussing quite exhaustively over the past few minutes and it makes sense when there is a great benefit to rice producers and consumers and that uh, such as uh, golden rice where there is a big humanitarian need and Dr. Alfonso expounded on that, that there is um, massive vitamin A deficiency in some subpopulations in the Philippines and in other countries that leads to sickness, blindness, and in some cases even death, especially among women and children. And lastly, there were questions uh, about the uh, regulatory process, there were questions about other kinds of studies and the like, etc., etc. And just wanted to share that, or just wanted to point out that we did this in an hour or so. And that's, that's really wonderful. So thank you for the engagement. Thank you to Sophie and her public relations team for putting this together. Thank you to our panel. Thank you to Marco and his team for uh, helping us with the live stream and uh, the others for monitoring the tweets, etc., etc. So see you downstairs and for the rest of the conference, we hope. <laughs> you haven't had lunch yet? <laughs>